All right, in the last video, um, I took this data, which is data um, of a teacher's salary from the years from 1990 to 1999, and this data was obtained off a Social Security statement that was mailed to the teacher. Um, I did leave out the 1994 data because I want to make a prediction of that data, so I went ahead and left out the raw data for that year when I entered it on my TI-84 Plus calculator. Um, I used the regression analysis on the calculator to come up with this equation which you see at the top of the board and I also found a correlation coefficient of 0.9726 um, determined that that was a statistically significant um, correlation coefficient it shows that there is a um, positive linear correlation a significant positive linear relationship between the data and we use that equation to make a prediction that in 1994 that the teacher's predicted salary would be um, $28,334.76. Now we know that that may not be accurate and we know that depending on what data we use, um, if we use different years data or maybe not the exact same years that we may get a different prediction. So instead of having a point prediction or a one number prediction in this video I want to show how to find the standard error of the estimate using the blue formula and also how to make find a 90% prediction interval. So I'm going to do a lot of that using the TI-84 Plus calculator. So I'm going to set the camera down, show how to use that, um, use the calculator to find, you can see the formula on the top up here in the blue, we need to find our Y values, which are actual values, minus our Y prime, our predicted values, and we need to square those differences. Then we need to divide by, excuse me, that says n minus 1, but it should say n minus 2. I'll change that. And then we need to take the square root. That will be the standard error of the estimate. Then we can use that value to actually um, find a prediction interval. So I'm going to set this up so you can see the um, calculator, hopefully. So what I'm going to do, make sure this is showing what I wanted to show, is I'm going to go back to my list. So I'm going to push stat, enter on my TA84 plus. I'm going to, um, oops, I need to turn on the calculator first. Stat, enter, takes me to my list. You can see in list one I have my um, years, and in list two I have my salaries. In list three I want to put my predicted salaries. So I get my cursor on top of the L3, top of list three. And I'm going to type in my equation, my regression equation, which was negative 2829238.724 plus my slope of $1,433.086 per year. Now that's, that's the slope represents the um, average rate of change in dollars per year. Now I don't just want to plug one X in though, I want to plug all the X values that you see in list one. So by typing in L1 instead of X, it will, the calculator will plug all of the list one values into the equation for me. So I'm going to push second one to get an L1 that you can see at the bottom of the screen right there. So I've typed in the equation with an L1. When I push enter it'll plug all the X values into the, into the uh, equation and then put all those answers in list 3 for me. So now I have my X's in list 1, my Y's in list 2, which are my actual salaries, my Y primes, which are my predicted salaries in list 3. In list 4 I'm going to subtract my Y's minus my Y primes, or my list 1, list 2, excuse me, minus list 3 and square them. So I'm going to move over to my list 4, get up on top of L4, left parenthesis, I'm going to go second 2 minus second 3, right parenthesis, squared. That will take my list 2's minus my list 3's, or my y's minus my y primes, squared. Put all those answers into list 4. So what I'm trying to get to is this blue formula up here. You can see up in that blue formula I need to do y minus y prime squared. And I notice I have a couple things wrong with that formula, so let me go up and fix them. Um, a couple things wrong. First of all, the 
degrees of freedom is n minus 2. This should be at n minus 2 up here. The other thing I'm forgetting is that we want to find the sum of these values. So I need my sigma, my summation symbol here. So next, if all of these values are in list 4, now I'm going to find the sum of those. So the way to do that with your calculator, at least one way to do it, is to uh, quit out of the list, second quit, and now I'm going to push um, second stat, which is the list menu, go over to the math menu, and go down to sum, choice 5. And then I want to take the sum of list 4, so second 4, and we can see that there's my sum. So that gives me the numerator in that blue formula, the formula for the sum of the, for the uh, standard error of the estimate. So now I want to divide that by n minus 2. Well, there are nine data points entered, so n would be 9, n minus 2 would be 7. 9 minus 2 is 7, so I'm going to divide by 7 over here. And then the formula now tells me to take the square root. So I'll take the square root. Square root of that answer. So 1,175.094489 is my standard error of the estimate. That's kind of like a standard deviation, all right? Your predictions are going to vary based on what your sample data looks like. So this gives you a standard deviation of how those vary. Of course, a larger standard deviation would mean that your predictions vary more. A smaller standard deviation means your predictions are going to vary less. Now, we're going to find the 90% prediction interval for the teacher's salary when X is 1994. The prediction interval formula is given here. So I'm going to make sure I have that all on, on uh, camera for you. Okay, just squeeze it all in. Zoom out just a little bit. There we go. So what I'm going to do is when X is 1994, I need to find my Y prime, my predicted salary. Well, I found that earlier. I found that earlier by plugging, I'm going to plug 1994 into my regression equation. And when I did that earlier on the last video, I got $28,334.76. Next, I'm going to have to find a uh, T score, okay, a test value for T. So what I'm going to, uh, excuse me, a critical value, or a, it's a, it comes off of a T chart or a T table, um, and that's that depends on um, the sample size, which determines degrees of freedom. Also determines on how accurate I want to be. So what I'm going to do is look at a T chart, look across the top for a 90% confidence interval, or in this case, a prediction interval and go down to degrees of freedom of 7, because if we have 9 data points, degrees of freedom is n minus 2, so we go down to 7. So I go down to 7 down the side, go over to 90%, I come up with a t-score of 1.895. Next, I need my standard error of the estimate. Well, that's what I found up here, 1,175.094, right there. The rest of the formula, I do 1 plus 1 over n, n is the number of data points, 9, n and n, 9 and 9. x is my 1994, given in the problem. Now, to get the actual x bar right here, and the sum of your x squareds and the sum of your x's, um, the easiest way to do that on your calculator is to do either one or two variable statistics will work. Okay? I think I'll show two variable statistics because that's what we did in the last video also. So what I would do is push stat, go over to the calculate menu, and choice two is two variable statistics. You could use one variable statistics because we're only really needing data on the x values, but either one will work. If your stuff's in list one and list two, you can just hit enter, that's the default. And you can see there, there's, the sum, there's your uh, x bar, 1994.555, your sum of your x's and your sum of your x squareds, which I already have all plugged into the formula over here. All right, so I get all this in here. I get my predicted salary. I get my T-score. I get my standard error of the estimate. I get the rest of my information input here. I put that all into the calculator. Now, typing this in is sometimes the hardest thing for, for people. 
get it typed in correctly into your calculator. What I would suggest is that you type in the numerator under your square root first. Type that in as is, hit enter. Once you get that answer, then hit divided by, and then I would put parentheses to make sure you divide by this entire quantity, and type this in as, as is, with no other parentheses. Then I would add one ninth, and then add one, and then at the after you get all those answers, don't forget to take the square root of that answer. If you do that, you should come up with this number for the black quantity, 1.055874. Then of course you're still going to have to multiply by the 1175.094 and the 1.895. I'm still going to have, notice I have plus or minus. I didn't want to rewrite this entire formula out again. Notice that this left side of the formula matches the right side. The only difference is this minus versus this plus. So that's the reason I wrote it um, in a little bit shorter form using the plus or minus. So I would still have the 28,334.76 here. This is my predicted amount, my point estimate or my point prediction. This is going to give me my error, my possible error. So I type this in the calculator, the 1.895 times this value times this value, and I come up with um, this as my next step, $28,334.76, plus or minus my error, which comes out to $2,351.225, so about 23 cents. Type this in with a subtraction symbol. Type it again and again with an addition symbol. Here's my final answer. My predicted y value. And I'm 90% confident that this would be correct. Um, is $25,983.54 is less than my predicted y, or my actual y value, which is less than $30,685.96. Label that with dollars. So what this means is that if I did this, if I collected data and used a random set of data here, random set of nine data points, um, that 90% of the time, the actual salary in 1994 will fall in this interval, which means 10% of the time it won't. So let's look to see if it did in this case. If we come over here, you can see at the bottom of the screen, the actual amount earned in 1994 was 27288 which does fall in this interval in this case. Will it happen every time? No. 10% of the time, the actual value won't fall in the interval. Now, of course, if we did a 95% prediction interval, then our actual fall value would fall in the interval 95% of the time. So it, it comes down to what how sure you want to be, how confident you want to be in your prediction.